Well, good evening, everybody. How are we all doing? Notting Hill Carnival this weekend. Bank holiday in August. We're having our own little carnival, though, with Anthony. Little Samba Festival going. I don't know what my, that intro was. But look, we've got the Here We Go there from Fabrizio Romano. We didn't know whether it was going to come a few days ago. 70 million. No, not 70 million. 80 million euro bid getting rejected. 90 million euro bid getting rejected. The interview from Anthony. The two and the fro. The 100 million euro deal. That has now been agreed for Brizio Romano has given it those famous three words here we go i'm going to we're going to talk about it in this stream here look i know it's overpriced you don't have to tell me that in the comments so <laughs> waste your second don't waste your seconds telling me that but this is a player who could come in and and will come in and add a sprinkling of match winning quality to that right wing we saw in that game against Southampton, we've seen in the game against Brentford how much we need that. And we're going to get it with Anthony. We're going to speak about it during this stream. You let me know what you think in the comments, but let's get this up on screen because we've been waiting for it, baby. Fabrizio Romano there with the Anthony to Manchester United. Here we go. Agreement in principle with Ajax for 100, Euro, 100, not, 100, 100 euros. Yes, please. 100 million euros fee contract until June 2027. So a five year deal with the option until 2028 to be signed tomorrow. Contracts being prepared. Eredivisie, historical record fee, the highest ever price paid for a player from the Eredivisie. Anthony will be in Manchester next week. I am, I'll be honest, I'm excited about this. I really am excited about this. No, it doesn't mean that we've had a perfect window. And I will speak about that later in the show. And I'm not coming here saying, oh, hunky-dory, rosy, everything's perfect. Far from perfect. Shit, we spent three months chasing Frankie de Jong. But if you don't, if you think I'm not going to enjoy the fact that we've gone out and we've signed Anthony, pff, well, again, you're, you're mistaken. You're massively mistaken. Any Ajax fans in the comments? We had a really good conversation on Friday. Loads of Ajax fans tuned into the show because I think quite a few have subscribed since Eric Ten Hag's arrived. I'd love to know what you think about it in the comments below. I'll try and uh, answer as many as I can. I've got a, a couple of tweets from Ajax fans to pull up during this show. And I'm going to try, as I say, to answer as much as I can throughout the show, but it will be a bit, bit of a busy one. Dion, let me know where you're watching from, buddy. I'll try and give you a shout out. Matt, nice to see you there, buddy. Long time no speak. And Pranav, you're saying, look, let's go. Should have been done a month ago, but I'm glad it's finally done. And it's the first thing we've all got to agree on. We know that. But this is, this is the summer of all summers when it comes to inflated transfer fees. You can start with Darwin Nunez. Look, Darwin Nunez and Anthony, the perfect examples. Both 22, both one coming from the Portuguese league, one coming from the Dutch league. Both not 100 million euro players, both being sold for 100 million euros. Also, both coincidentally, both selling clubs lost 20% of that fee that went to the club that they bought them from. Darby Nunez, I'm not sure who, who they signed him from. And Anthony, I got it wrong on Twitter earlier, was actually signed from Sao Paulo, not from Santos. His second name, Santos. Got that one wrong. But Ajax aren't getting the full, they're getting 80% of the fee. Yes, it's overpriced, but it's just what's going on this summer. It is, it's stupid. Fafana to Leicester for 80 million. Are you kidding me? Anthony Gordon to Chelsea for, <laughs> are you kidding me? Uh, and there's loads and loads more than that. I even think that, what, Cucurella to from Brighton to Chelsea was an outrageous fee. And Anthony, you can add that onto the list. Sure, great. I don't give a shit, ultimately. And if we're taking our like football manager hat on this, we can be like, oh, Sam, why would you go and spend 100 million on Anthony when you could go and sign a midfielder for, uh, you can go and sign another midfielder for 50 million, then another, a striker for 30 million, another winger for 20 million. It doesn't really work like that. Although the logic can mean you can look at it like that, it, the reality is not quite the same. And Anthony to Manchester United, this is a very, very exciting transfer indeed. And I'll be honest, one thing that should absolutely fill you with excitement, look at how Malice has settled into Manchester United. Look at how Martinez has settled into Manchester United. Look at how Ericsson has settled into Manchester United. Look at how these new signings are settling in to Manchester United. It's fantastic. And Casemiro, let's see what happens. But I'm pretty damn confident I'm, that he's going to settle in very, very well. And I think we can all have real confidence because I tell you what, Ten Hag has got some serious, serious belief in Anthony to go out 
and agreed to spend a hundred million. I mean, it's not his money; it's not coming out of his back pocket. But he's got to give it the sign off. Lou, what are you saying? Do you think Anthony will come straight into the team? Will he ease him in? <laughs> he's going straight into that starting eleven without question. You don't get a hundred million euro signing and just ease him in slowly. Should have gotten him when we got Martinez. Hey, look, they wanted. 130 million euros apparently for him and they've they've gone and got 167 million euros and their their total revenue as a club last year was 125 million euros it's it's a fantastic deal for Ajax fair play to Ajax congratulations to you I hope that you can use that to rejuvenate your squad that has been absolutely demolished in the summer transfer market and I don't begrudge that I begrudged I spoke about that quite a few times I think you've been pretty disrespectful as a club in how you've shifted the golf posts halfway through negotiations. And to me, that's you basically going, ah, crap, we've underpriced that. I think we need to change the price halfway through a sale. Chris, you're saying I've wanted this guy before Ten Hag, since before Ten Hag was appointed. Look at you. Absolutely. Don't you? Some sort of don is you going as a scout to Manchester United. He's an absolute baller and he's going to be great for us. I am over the moon at this transfer. Chris, you're not going to be the only one. I absolutely think this is going to be a fantastic transfer. A bit more insight into the deal itself because we know, right, it's been a weird couple of weeks. I wouldn't say it was a saga because it only lasted really a couple of weeks. But just the twists and turns of this Anthony situation was just a bit odd. Really quite odd. And this is what Mike Provide said earlier today. He said the football hierarchy of Ajax, including Jerry Hamstra, Klaus-Jan Huntelaar and Alfred Schroeder, they were all of the opinion that Anthony leaving was not a possibility. But they were superseded by Susan Lenderink, who is a financial director at Ajax, I believe. So we've got to go out and say, thank you very much, Susan. Absolutely superb from you. That's what it seems like. Uh, and that's what it felt like, I think. We, it was the loggerheads. And that's why Edwin van der Sar sort of stepped in. That's why the financial side of Ajax went, look, lads, like we, I know that we've sold a lot of players this summer, but it's 100 million euros. We cannot turn this down. You're going to have to accept it. And now I think we're hearing they've got breakthroughs at the fact the Ziek deal with Ziek going to Ajax. Now that now that Anthony's come to Manchester United, I'm sure that'd be good for them. I'm sure it'll work out for them. But Anthony, wow, what a deal. Ahmed, it's overpriced, but I don't care as long as our messed up owners back the manager because his signings are all starting to have an impact. Just mentioned that there. It's a good point. Society, glad got him. Glazes out. Come on, man. You know full well that. And this is something I will say now quickly as a quick pause. It doesn't matter how much the, the Glazers spend. It's not about forcing the, 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 our owners to spend more money. It's about trying to get them out of the club. Could just completely. Brand new beginnings. Bringing in someone with an ambition that actually wants to win all the titles and wants to win the silverware. That's not the Glazers' ambition. And no matter how much they spend on transfers, that position will never change for United fans. In 2010, when we were in the middle of winning Champions Leagues and back-to-back -back league titles, we were protesting against the Glazers. It's not just about money. Don't be so naive to think it is. All right, so a, a signing like this does not change that opinion. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it does improve our squad quite significantly. And I'll tell you what, like, fair play to Anthony himself. Because this interview here that he gave with Fabrizio Romano, I personally feel um, played a pretty damn substantial role in this deal going through. Right. I, th I, I think it played an absolutely major role. Uh, Fedja, you sent a super chat saying sell Rashford and get a good striker. What do you think? Rashford's not getting sold this summer. Maybe next summer if he has another year of no progress, but he's not getting sold this summer. JG Barber, you're joining as a member. That is a massive carp. Carp? Is he a carp? I don't know. It's a fish. Anyway, got distracted by your profile picture. But look, Anthony doing that public interview with uh, Fabrizio Romano really took a bit of power away from Ajax. It was all very public at that point. He said he asked to leave in February. He said he'd asked to leave in June. He said he asked to leave when they offered him a contract extension. He's like, guys, seriously, please just let me leave the club. And now he's left the club. And now he's come to Manchester United. And this is going to be a cracking reunion because it's obvious. It's obvious here just how much Eric Ten Hag believes in Anthony. And he's going to have to be Every single part, the top level coach that we all know he is and think he is when it comes to Anthony, because he's going to come to the Premier League and he's going to be dropped into the well, dropped into the lion's den when it comes to playing for Manchester United. And when it comes to being a 100 million euro signing, everybody outside of our club is going to want him to fail and want him to fail spectacularly. 
And it's a lot of pressure to put on any shoulders. And none of us can really relate to that in any way, shape or form. But some players thrive in that environment. It, look, it was the fuel that made Ronaldo the player that he is or maybe the player that he was. And with Anthony, can he become that sort of player? Ten Hag will be hoping he is. And I'll be honest, at the price that he's been... It's just a shame now because the price raises expectations to another level altogether. And we all know that that wasn't the price of Anthony. So realistically, he's like a 50 to 60 million euro signing. Well, that's not actually what we pay for him, but you know what I mean? I think that's that was a fair market value. But because it was 100 million, there's going to be an expectation of immediacy. What's what's your thoughts on that in the comments? How do you think Anthony's going to settle in tomorrow morning? No, tomorrow, not morning. Tomorrow at 12, going to have my scouting report out on Anthony. Been preparing it, been holding back on it. But Anthony, we're going to run through the tactics in a little bit. I'll try and make this a nice little show for Sunday evening. It's bank holiday. Drop a like on the video. Come on, people. I'm not even out drinking. I'm here talking. Look at that's That's commitment. It's also because I got drunk last night. I don't want to get drunk tonight. Chris, I'm going to the Leeds United game at Old Trafford. Very excited to see Casemiro and Anthony. Hopefully, we'll be better than my Brighton game. Well, it can't be much worse than Brighton. Actually, that's a lie. It could have been Brentford. Uh, but uh, I was there for the Liverpool game, and it was an absolutely cracking night. And also a real sign that this team is capable of something a bit different this season under, under Eric Ten Hag. We followed that up with that game against Southampton. Now we've got to see what we can do with adding these two onto it. Um, see, Billington, let me know where you're watching from, buddy. I'll try and give you a shout out. Brendan, you're saying, look, will he play versus Leicester? I don't think he'll play versus Leicester. Uh, I think the what we've seen with transfers so far, um, work permit issues inside the UK post-Brexit, they take a little bit longer. What we've got, four days. I think he'll be in Manchester, sort of working with the team. I don't think that he will go straight into the team. So the first game that we've got then, when is the next game after that? Let me have quickly pull the fixtures up here after Leicester. Of course, the game's coming thick and fast. We've got Leicester on Thursday at 8 p.m. Is it Sunday half four? Yeah, Sunday at half four. Geez, Arsenal at home. Now, that will be a serious game to come into, given how Arsenal are playing at the moment. Wow, imagine that'll be his first game. Imagine, though, I think I think Casemiro will start against Leicester, but maybe the first game at Old Trafford for those two. Could be Anthony debut and Casemiro Old Trafford debut against a high-flying Arsenal at Old Trafford. If we can go into that, especially off the back of three wins, that'll be a tasty occasion. Malp saying, told you, Sam, it would be a 100 million euro price. I called it. We all knew... I think we all deep down knew, right? Like Mark, Martin, you're saying, look, you're buzzing down there. Calife on Facebook, you're saying you're glad to hear it. We're all glad to hear it. None of us are glad to hear what the price is, but it's just modern football is just weird, isn't it? It's just weird. There's just so much money being banded around in the Premier League. It's just like a free for all, absolute free for all. And United, yeah, we've been uh, we've been taken to the shops there. I put a price on him. We offered it. They said no. We came back. They said no. We came back. We just went up and up and up. And it's just Ajax were doing what they kind of, and let's be honest, should have done. That's what that's what Manchester United are like in the transfer market at the moment. What we need to do is sign more Tyrell Malaseas, be a sustainable football club, sign a player for 20 million. He plays great for you for four or five years. And then he's even worth even more than that by the time you sell him because you sign him young. But look, Anthony, uh, wow. It's a huge signing. It's a huge signing indeed. Something I quickly want to say here, right? There's been a lot of, um, I don't know how to describe it, really. A European lad on Twitter is sort of like the leading voice when it comes to, well, not the leading voice, just a prominent voice when it comes to Ajax fans. And he's been getting pelters left, right and centre. I'll be completely honest, he's kind of twists, he's kind of changed his tone on the Anthony situation. They're going, I suppose, like through the stages of grief, if you want to call it that, about the idea of we're never going to sell Martinez and Anthony. So we're never going to sell Anthony. We've already sold Martinez at... It's, but the Ajax fans, you're watching your team getting sort of picked apart. All the cherries are getting taken. You're just being left with stems. And that's being a slightly unfair. I still think you've got a decent squad there. But yeah, I wouldn't. I don't really want to sort of advocate that, if you know what I mean. I, I do have a degree of sympathy to Ajax for what's gone on. But what I say I don't have sympathy for is the fact that Ajax moved the goalposts, right? That's the thing I just can't get my head around. You moved it with Martinez and I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. But he did it twice. He did it again with Anthony. And we haven't shafted us. You've just taken more of our money. So in that sense, it's not it's not a personal thing, but it's just like pfft, you reap what you sow. And also when you're seeing, I think this one here, Alfred Schroeder, of course, the manager of Ajax saying this today. Nowadays, everything is about money. And I find this sad, but this is our world. 
it's very sad and i don't approve that these things are happening at us but it's a bit of a it's a strange thing standpoint to have because ix well ix's wage bill is what twice anybody else inside the era divisia from a domestic standpoint ix have always been the big dogs when it comes to the money and this situation for me it's the way I described it on Twitter was two different parts of the same, two different phases of the same thing. When Anthony was signed by Ajax from Sao Paulo, what they did is they went there with the money to a club that was like, well, we, could, we want to hold on to him, but we can't. That's just that's just what we are, where he is. And we know that we're going to sell the player and they sold him on. 20 million to Ajax from Sao Paulo. Manchester United, we're on a, no disrespect to us, we're on, we're, on, we're on a level up. We are on a level up. We're on a different level in the same way that Ajax were on a different level to Sao Paulo when they signed Anthony. We're on a different level to Ajax. And now we're paying for it. And that's just the way that football works. And as I said, Ajax domestically have always been the big financial powerhouse inside Holland. It's just that Manchester United at this point are the financial powerhouse coming over the top here to sign Anthony. Uh, that, that's kind of my opinion on that situation. So it's, it's, it's a weird one. It's an odd one. Kim, you're saying, look, best news I've heard all week. And Terje, what are you are saying, sir? Absolutely fantastic signing. Phil, we've got a good chance to win the Europa League. We've got to be really strong, strong favourites. Well, right up there. One of these strong favourites to win the Europa League. Of course, that changes maybe when the teams come out of the Champions League. But going into it from the group stage, especially with, what is it, Sociedad, Omanoia. Book my, book my flights, by the way. We'll go into Cyprus. That would be good fun. Um, can't remember who the third team is. Doesn't really matter. Who is it? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. And what are you saying? I'm pleased we secured Anthony, but I never hit the fact I thought it was overpriced. Can't help but wonder if 100 million would have been secured and Kunku extension or not. Well, that's a hypothetical question, I suppose. We'll never know the answer to. But given that he's available for 60 million, 65 million next summer on a release clause, don't think we're ever going to pay that. Everybody knows it's overpriced. And I don't really care. As I say, I don't care. This. The price tag is going to be something that the media uses to like as a stick to beat Anthony with a hypothetical stick, maybe an actual stick. I don't know, but it's that's what is in the same way that we're looking at, um, the, in the same way that we're looking at Darwin Nunez and go, Ooh, 100 million that's overpriced. It's like pff, if he has that sort of impact at Liverpool, no one cares at Liverpool, no one, no fan really cares about the price tags as long as the club is signing the players that they need to. And I'll be honest, man. This club, this summer, we backed our manager, right? The number one target for him all summer long was Frankie de Jong. We agreed a fee with Barcelona. That wasn't the club's fault. The club got that fee agreed and done. Lo and behold, it's not happened. And I don't think it's going to happen in the next three days. So honestly, I don't think, get, don't get your hopes up. If that happens, we're going to have a good stream if that happens. But we've got Malasia, we've got Martinez, we've got Ericsson, we've got Casemiro, who for me is, wow, what a pivot away from De Jong that is. And now we've got Anthony. We have followed Ten Hag's instructions in the transfer window. It's symptomatic of a club that is just poorly run. We should have everything in plan, everything in place, a whole department working on that for months on end with mountains of data. But that same mountains, those same data mountains said that wan was the best right back that we could sign. No, it was not. But we've trusted Ten Hag. And I tell you what, looking at, as I say, reiterating the point I made earlier, looking at Madasir, looking at Ericsson, looking at um, Martinez, and hopefully looking at Casemiro, the early signs are good. The players are having an immediate impact and they are looking strong. And they've all been brought by Ten Hag to play the Ten Hag system. And the early signs are good. So I'll be really interested to see what Anthony can do. We're going to take a look at the tactics board in a little bit. We all know where he's going to play. Lo and behold, it's going to be on the right wing. And there's no question about it. He is a pure and utter specialist on the right wing. I was going to say right wing specialist. Might be something different altogether. A pure specialist on the right wing. Somebody who's got flair, trickery, excitement, goals, match winning capabilities. The sort of person that can make something happen from nothing. And we saw against Southampton how desperately we needed, how desperately we need that player. We just don't have that profile in, in, in our current set of attackers before Anthony came in. Maybe Jaden Sancho. You, no, in fact, no, Jaden, that's unfair. Jaden Sancho does do that. But again, Anthony's a different sort of player to Sancho. And that, they're going to, it's a perfect blend. There won't be any more switching of the wings, I don't think. Anthony will stick to the right hand side and Sancho will stick to the left. 
It means Rashford drops out of that starting 11. Or maybe Rashford gets moved into a central position, as kind of we've seen him in the last couple of games. And we all know that Rashford had a season where he scored, nine, what was it, 19 goals? 2019-20 season? Maybe that's where Rashford's going to play until we fully, properly replace Ronaldo. And who knows, maybe Ronaldo will get replaced and maybe Gakpo will come in. I don't know. There's still maybe more that could happen this summer. Um, Chiseled, you're saying, here we go, finally a right-wing specialist. We haven't had one since Beckham. Well, I'm pretty sure we have Ronaldo for a while. Give Eric Ten Hag everything he wants. All his buys look great. Still the Glazers out until they go, mate. Don't worry about that. Well, actually, do worry about that. That's, that's exactly what you got to do. But the fan pressure it feels stronger than it ever has. And no fan's going to get swept up inside this um, inside this Anthony situation or the transfer situation. We're all still protesting. We're still doing our job. So keep doing what you're doing. Brendan, what are you saying? That, what's that you say? We get Frankie de Jong and you giving a free shirt away. Well, done. There you go. If we sign Frankie de Jong, I'll give a shirt away. You heard it here first. Uh, someone there saying Memphis for 10 million. Memphis is going to get his contract terminated, people. Men no one's going to be paying for Memphis. Uh, somebody who I do want to say a big, big thank you here to Edwin Van der Sar, who, I, who you unequivocally got involved towards the end of this situation, especially as we've heard now that the sort of the... Um, it was basically Hamstra, Huntala, who, of course, is the new Overmars situation, and Schroeder saying, no, we're not selling Anthony. He is not for sale. Stop taking players away from me. And the board came and said, eh, you might want to rethink that, guys. And Van der Sar would definitely have been part of those conversations. Van der Sar is a CEO, probably doing more work for Manchester United than John Murto. No, no, John Murto. I'm not speaking about John Murto until the end of the transfer window. I've, I've always maintained here on United People's TV, vigorously, in fact. I said, I think by the end of the summer transfer window, I think you will have a smile on your face. And I tell you what, the way it's, way it's happening now, what have we got? Malasia, Martinez, Ericsson on a free transfer, Casemiro's come in, and now we've signed Anthony. Is it a perfect window? Far from it. But let me pull this up just to give you a little bit of grounding, I suppose, to understand what's happened this window. This is probably what you would have said was Manchester United's strongest 11 or probably most regularly played 11. You can argue about positions if you want. McTominay and Fred in midfield with Bruno, Rashford and Sancho on the wings, Ronaldo up front, Shaw and Delo as the fullbacks, Lindelof and Maguire and De Gea. I read that team out really, really weird. Um, look at it now, right? Look at this now. Last season to what we currently have now. De Gea in goal with Martinez and Varane as the two starting centre-backs. Malasia and Delo as the two full-backs with a midfield trio of Casemiro, Eriksen and Bruno. So going from Tomine, Fred and Bruno to Casemiro, Eriksen and Bruno with a front three of Sancho, Sancho, Anthony and Martial, switching from Rashford, Sancho and Ronaldo. Now you could say that Ronaldo could come in. I don't particularly think that Ronaldo's well, he'll stay. Yeah, I think he'll stay at the club, but that's not because he wants to be at Manchester United. He'll stay at Manchester United because there aren't no other clubs that want him. But look how much stronger that team is, right? This squad is looking substantially better than it was last season. No, it's not finished. No, it's not complete. Yes, we still need more. But I would implore you to try and Try and place yourself in reality, reality here, people. We've signed one, two, three, four, five first-team players there. I think we'll still sign a backup goalkeeper. I think we'll still sign a backup right-back. So that's probably going to be seven incomings. That's a lot for one summer. And ideally, yes, we would get a new striker. I agree with you. Ideally, yes, Ericsson and De Jong would make this squad better. But this squad is certainly better than it was last year. All right. If we if if this if the see if the summer was to end tomorrow, well not tomorrow, if the summer was to end after we sign Anthony, I don't if Anthony's the last signing, drop in the comments, what would you give Manchester United's summer transfer window out of ten? I'll be really interested to know what the sort of average is down here. I'll try and read it out. Of course, more is still needed. More is still required. But that team there is a substantial, substantial upgrade on that one there. That's what I think. So anyway, I'll be interested to know what you think in the comments. There was a comment from an Ajax fan there. Coos, what are you saying? As an Ajax fan, not really objective. I don't think Anthony's that good. 
He scored only a few goals last year and never performed against good teams. Now, again, I, I personally feel that you're doing exactly what I would do if I was to set a player that I didn't want my club to sell. And I would sort of kind of take a couple of steps back and be like, well, you know, he wasn't the best performing. Well, you know, he was inconsistent. Yes, that's what I mean. He's not worth 100 million euros on paper. But he is worth 100 million euros to Eric Ten Hag. He is worth 100 million euros to this Manchester United team, which is in desperate need of an attacking, creative, dominant flair player on that right wing. It will transform how we attack. Transform it. It really will. Rico, what are you saying, sir? Ajax fan here. Curious how Anthony will hold up in the Prem. I imagine he will get kicked out more, but I hope he rocks it out. He will do. No doubt he's going to get targeted for that straight away. But uh, I suppose Martinez was targeted for that straight away. And look, it's turned into two man-of-the-match performances against Liverpool and against uh, Southampton. A couple of members joining here, and then I'm going to go down and read what your ratings would be out of 10. JG, let me know where you're watching from, buddy. Nice to have you on board. And there was one more up there. Where is it? Was that Klein? Look at that. I recognize your, your, recognize your little profile picture. Look at that. What bloke? Right. You're saying 8 out of 10. B, you're saying eight. We've got seven, eights. We've got nine, seven out of ten. What are you saying down here? Six, seven, eight, eight, five, seven. I think, I think it's, I think that's pretty much bang on there. Thomas, Thomas Merriweather there. That's a great name, Thomas Merriweather. Seven and a half out of ten. I would probably go seven or seven and a half out of ten, if I'm being completely honest, right? I still think there's, of course, there's more that could be done. It should be done. De Jong, Ericsson was never brought into Manchester United this summer to be our starting central midfielder. He looked exhausted in that game against Southampton. I think he was brought in to supplement, to, to not be the backup to De Jong, but just to be there to make sure that if De Jong was out of the team, we would still have a player like him in it, and that would be Ericsson. But instead, he's playing every week. I'm concerned about that, how that's going to go across the season. Gungshi, you're going as high as 8 out of 10. Whatever it is, Eric Ten Hag has been given the tools he needs to challenge for this top four spot. I said it uh, a couple. Well, I said it in my predictions for the start of the season. I said Manchester United were a fifth. Fifth was what I backed us to finish if we were going to finish fifth. It didn't look particularly promising. And I'll be honest, the first two games of the season happened and we were like, wow, fifth, that's a bit of a stretch. Now that we've got Casemiro in, now that we've got Anthony in, this team's starting to come together. You can feel it coming together. And those two performances, Liverpool and Southampton, two very different performances. One was in front of Old Trafford, in front of a really loud and boisterous set of fans that would, we were cheering every tackle like it was a goal. And the players, they thrived off that. At that occasion, they thrived off it. Whereas the, the pressure against Brighton, it went the other way. It was weird. And then Southampton was a gritty, I'll be honest, out of the 90 minutes, I think we played well for about 20, 25 overall. Under a lot of pressure in different situations, that it probably would have ended up as a draw. But we held on. We kept the clean sheet. Something different. Now against Leicester, we've got to see what goes on there. Leicester, who, of course, I think lost to Chelsea uh, at the weekend, even though Chelsea had 10 men. Leicester have lost their, their zhuzh. I think, I think, I feel like, I said at the start of the season, I actually backed Leicester to be down towards uh, the relegation battle. And I hope that we can go and win there. Because imagine getting three wins in, going to that game against Arsenal on Sunday with Anthony making his debut and with Casemiro making his Old Trafford debut. That's the situation I want to be in. Caps, you're saying eight out of ten. Also, the bench is transformed with Rashford, Ronaldo, Fred McSauce, Maguire and Lindelof. And of course, Garnacho. don't forget about him. It's I'm going to be doing a video uh, at the end of the transfer window. So what we've got, three days left now. And I'm going to do a video really diving deep into these two teams, into what what we were last year to where we are now and the strength in that second 11 as well. And we're going to analyse it together because I tell you what, it's looking good. It really is looking good, man. Uh, what were you saying down here in the comments? I'm just going to read a few random comments down here. Bebo, what are you saying? If De Jong is defo staying at Barca, Tielemans to United and Maguire moved as a centre forward. Oh, that was a weird comment all round, really. Tielemans, I'll be honest, the Tielemans situation, why has no one gone in for him? It was a bit like Bellotti, you know, as a free free agent. I think he's just joined Roma. Didn't make any sense that no one was going after him. It didn't really make any sense that no one's going after Tielemans. But I don't know why. There must be a reason behind it. Uh, Luca, happy birthday, buddy. Oh, I hope it is your birthday. You're not just dropping that one in. If it is, I suppose I'll never know. 
Um, Joel, you're going as low as five. You're saying business should have been done a month ago and for cheaper too. That I can't disagree with. Anthony, I think it's the right signing for Eric Ten Hag and Manchester United. It's who he wanted. Always was the number one, I believe, at the start of the summer. We said it would be... Start of summer, our priorities were a central midfielder, a centre-back, a, a, a versatile forward, we called it. Now, that's the complete opposite of what Anthony is. Anthony is a very much an attacking specialist. He's a right-wing player. That's where he's going to play. But Rashford is obviously, I think, the way we're looking at it now, especially with Sancho going to go to the left-hand side and with Anthony going to the right. I imagine you're going to see, be seeing Rashford playing a lot more as a centre forward this year than he did last year. We all feel that his best position is coming off the left. But when you've got players like Sancho and Anthony, they deserve to be starting in their, in their prime positions. So you're going to have to see Rashford come in there through the middle. And let's be honest, Rashford's the majority of Rashford's goals came with those runs in behind, the balls over the top, and he can still get those in that, in that centre forward position. But he's just not done it enough on that left-hand side. Jarvis Cocker, maybe it's a real Jarvis. It's not a real Jarvis Cocker. Rashford can't break down a low block. He's useless with his back to the goal. We need a striker. Hey, look, I, I'm not saying that... Um, uh, I'm not saying that Rashford is a solution as a striker. I don't think he is. But I don't think we're going to get the solution this year. Right? We're looking at stop gaps. This summer will not be the summer where we re replace Ronaldo. Jeez, we're having that conversation again. Uh, I don't, I don't, I can't put any money on the fact that I think Ronaldo's staying or going. I would find it very odd at this point if all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Ronaldo finds a Champions League team that's willing to pay his wages that wants to sign him. But I surely he would have found that by now. And that's why I think he's just going to stay. And he's just going to have to deal with what he's got. And that is Ronaldo, man. I'm sorry. You're a, you're a, you're a squad player for Manchester United now. You're not going to be in that starting 11 week in, week out. And you saw it there, like, even in the last 20 minutes against Southampton. That one where the ball went over the top and Ronaldo ran into the space. Ronaldo would have always would have eaten that up for dinner. Instead, he got done for pace. Looked a little bit puffed cheeks, puffed his cheeks out there. It's a shame, but that's just the position that he is in. Gordon, you're saying, look, hey, Sam, these great players that we've signed can only make the average players better. I hope so, too. And in my opinion, my favorite signings in, Man in Manchester United's history, it's a little bit different given the fact that we spent 100 million on him. But I love signing players who have star quality, who come to Manchester United as burgeoning talents, and they become world-class stars at the club. Whether that would be, I mean, Rio, Rio kind of was a star when we signed him. Uh, Rooney, when he came, or Evra, or Vidic, those players that sort of blossom into stars at the club, you, it feels like a privilege as a fan to, to watch that player grow in your club. And I hope we can add Anthony to the list. But get, mate, get, come on, man. I know that there's more that still needs to be done at this club, but that is, I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. It doesn't take away from the fact that I want to glaze out the club. So, like, please don't feel like me celebrating a signing is is detracting from that. And people like, people love doing it. People love trying to, oh, you're talking about transfers. No, no, man, it's the fucking news. And I will cover the news. I will speak about the transfers. That's going to affect this season. Whilst at the same time, I will continue. And No one has to tell me about the Glazers, man. For years and years and years, I've been going on about it, and no, mate, everybody has. I'm not, I'm not like the, I'm not the preacher here. But you don't have to, you don't have to preach to me. Is my point, right? JVD, let me know where you're watching from, dude. Uh, Sandra, you're watching from Ghana. Big up Ghana. I'm gonna need to go back there at some point. Um, let me see where else you're saying down here. Number seven for Anthony if Ronaldo leaves. Let's see what goes on. Vic, finally watching live from Kansas. Nice to have you there, dude. But look, let's. I'll answer some Q and As. Let's get some more news up here. It's a cracking show. It's Sunday evening. We've got the Here We Go here from Fabrizio Romano. We're in a good mood all round. Hey, sorry, why not? Let's give some memberships out. Why not? It's Sunday night. Da -da -da -da. Let me go on the channel here and try and do this whilst I'm live on the stream. Now, that's multitasking for you. Let me get this up here. Can I do it on my phone? No, I can't do it on my phone, right? Got to do it on my laptop. Give me one second, people, here. I don't know who it is, but 10 of you are about to get gifted a membership courtesy of me. Call it a present. Say thank you to Anthony. He's put me in a good mood. What can I say? Let me just do this now. Ba -da -da -da. Da -na 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 -na. Where is it? One second. Wait for it. Boom. Right. Ten of you have been gifted memberships there. Drop a like on the video and say thank you very much to Anthony for that. But let me go down there and say, as I said, look, Manchester United, we've got the here we go. 
we got the here we go. Apparently, the Athletic have been tweeting about it as well. Let me try and pull up the Athletic's article on that. Maybe we can get a little bit more insight from David Ornstein on the situation. There we go. Oh, wow. Okay, we do have more information. Let me pull this bad boy up on screen there. I hope you 10 members who've got gifted a membership there enjoy that. But make sure you drop a like on the video and join the game. But look, here we go, right? A bit more information from uh, The Athletic, from David Ornstein and Laurie Whitwell. Manchester United reached an Anthony agreement in principle and will pay Ajax a guaranteed 95 million euros. So 95 million and then 5 million in add-ons. Massive deal there for Ajax. Manchester United have reached an agreement in principle with Ajax to sign Anthony in a deal worth 100 million euros. The Athletic reported earlier on Sunday that the clubs were close to settling on a fee after United saw a third bid in the region of 90 million rejected. United finally made a breakthrough in their pursuit and are set to pay the Dutch club a guaranteed 95 plus 5 million add-ons. The guaranteed figure includes a solidarity solidarity payment of 2.7%. Don't know what that's. I think it's for training, isn't it? A deal could now be finalized on Monday. Man, that would be cracking way to start the week. Imagine we got the the proper announcement. That would be nice. Uh, yes, please. Come on. Come on. Uh, Eric Ten Hag was eager to be re- reunited with his former Ajax player. And Anthony has spoken out publicly to try and force the move. Well, we know about that. Let's go down here, see if there's any more information. Ten Hag's already signed him. Blah, blah, blah. Nothing else there. But that's the big information there from David Ornstein and Laurie Whitwell. That's a huge fee. Again, Ajax fans down in the comments, what's, what's your feeling on that? Because, man, Ajax has sorted for years now. Ajax are an incredible club when it comes to rebuilding. Ten Hag did it in 2019-20 to that team that's now just got torn apart. I have no doubt they'll do it again. I've got absolutely no doubt they'll do it. And I think Ajax have actually had their best start to the season since like 2015. I think so anyway. Uh, Klein saying, Sam, still don't know how we found 200 million. Honestly, man, I wish that... If I ever look down the back of my sofa, I'm going to find... I don't, know, I don't even know what... I don't want to say what I might find. But it won't be 200 million euros, I'll tell you that. Um, Philip, you're down here saying, look, two years' time, we'll see Garnacho on the left and Anthony on the right. Ooh-wee! That South American samba, baby. Anthony is, 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 Anthony's going to be that sort of player, right? Who just gets you to the edge of your seat and Old Trafford. As soon as he receives the ball, you're like, go on, do something, do something, do something, do something. And he loves doing it. He, he, he's an entertainer. He's somebody who has the flair and the confidence to use that flair, right? I can't wait to see what he does at this club. And especially after that Southampton. It, that, that Southampton game was the perfect game to show all fans exactly why we needed Anthony. It isn't just a case of going, oh, we could do with some more strength in depth up front. It's far, far more than that. Anthony coming into the club as a true right wing specialist adds a game cha- a game changing option and difference on that wing because he's now somebody who can actually skip past the player you he, you can now throw the ball to him and actually expect him to sort of create something out of nothing instead of just passing to Elanga or just looking for the run in behind you know the basic moves that you go with the wingers when you've got someone like Anthony who can make something from nothing it brings a whole different dimension and unpredictability to Manchester United's attack that we just haven't had for a long, long time. Bob, what are you saying, sir? Let's not take away from the Glazers out. Sooner they go, the better. Mate, absolutely not. But it's an exciting signing. And I'm, ex- I'm glad the manager's getting backed. He absolutely is getting backed. And uh, Senele, you're saying, look, 200 mil well spent, but we overpaid on three transfers. Absolutely. We overpaid on Martinez. We overpaid there on Anthony. Casemiro, yeah, I think we can all agree that was a bit much too. But Casemiro is a ready-made elite level player. <laughs> Uh, Sancho, we all thought Sancho was a right wing specialist, but so a lot of uh, quite a lot of games uh, for Sancho at Dortmund actually did come on the left wing, so it, it wasn't too much of a surprise to be seeing him playing there. But it was weird, isn't it? We spent we we we, we were so excited, we're like we finally sorted our right wing. We're like Sancho's playing on the left, but in Anthony, we can say with complete confidence we have signed and sorted our right wing issues now. Well, in terms of the football team, Nabil, you saying no matter what United do, for me the Glazers need to sell the club. The Glazers took out this money as soon as Ratcliffe got interested. I, the timing was the timing stunk. And I, I've told you, that's the one word I'm going to remember from this summer transfer window is just timing. It's the timing of everything. The timing of us finding 200 million to sign all these players. The timing of us going for Casemiro when we chased De Jong for three months. 
the timing of Ronaldo putting in his transfer request. Just timing. That's the thing for me that has frustrated me the most this summer. Because I've got to say that Eric Ten Hag is being backed to the tune of, what is it? Uh, 95 up front for Anthony. It's 100 plus 70 for Casemiro. It's 70 plus... It's the biggest we've spent on a, a manager's first season. And I did a video a good while ago and I said, Eric Ten Hag deserves 200 million this summer. And the club's done that. Now, I wish that I wish that they had done it earlier. I wish that they had done it proactively instead of reactively. As somebody said there, it kind of looks like they were reacting to the Ratcliffe situation. It felt like that too, didn't it? It really felt like it too. But I don't particularly care how overpriced this lad is. He is a very, very exciting player. He really, really is. As I say uh, to all Ajax fans, I feel sorry for how your clubs sort of got ripped apart this summer you can't like with your manager assistant manager right back left back center back central midfielder right winger and striker i mean i don't know how many players it is it's an absolute ton of players i don't particularly think ix covered themselves in glory and how they dictated this transfer asked for 80 million said no we bid 80 million they said no 90 million they even said no 90 million it's like you you shifted the goalpost too much Good luck to you getting uh, getting Ziek in three days. But uh, Anthony told you as far back as February that he wanted to leave and he still dug your feet in. So uh, you can't say that, ah, oh, this is just United leaving it late in the window. I actually been part of that situation as well. Charlie, let me know where you're watching from, buddy. I'll try and give you a shout out. How many Antis do we need? I don't know. We've got Anthony. We've got Elanga. We've got Martial. We've got Anthony. Three, apparently. Uh, ben, you're saying, look, this is the deal we needed for so long. Next mission to get the Glazers out. Huge fat bag. Thank you very much, Ben. Nice to have you on board. Look, as I said, I've said it before and I've said it. The, the energy behind the Glazers, getting the Glazers out now, feels stronger than it ever has before. And I say that because of the consistency of it. We're not just looking at one big protest and it goes a bit quiet. We're looking at every single home game, the 1958 organizing protests. Every away game, chance. Every occasion now that we can do something, there is noise on top of that. Ian, I see you there, buddy. Saying, when we get in timber then? Pfft, well, I literally may as well just rename us, ourselves to Ajax. Just change the tune to Three Little Birds instead of This Is The One. I don't think anybody would notice. I don't think anybody would notice. I think they would. That was a complete and utter lie. Um, comment, comment coming in there from uh, David D. Thank you, buddy. What are you saying? As a Dutchie, from what I heard from Mike Vavage, they had to accept this offer for Anthony. Otherwise, Brazilian agents won't see Ajax as an option as a step up for Premier League clubs. And that's a very, very interesting point of view. You got It's an interesting point then, rather than point of view. Ajax fans, I think you can... It's not me being unfair saying this, but that's what your club is. That's the, that's the way that Ajax has been built. You have a fantastic academy. You have a fantastic scouting department. And you identify top-level players and you cherry-pick them and you bring them in and you turn them into stars. And then you sell them on. And then you find another one and you and that's the that's the that's that's allowed you to dominate financially the Dutch league. But that's just the way it works, right? That's just the way it works. Uh, in football and in this summer particular, as I say, 100 million for Nunes, 100 million for uh, Anthony, maybe 60 million for Euro, sorry, 6 million pounds for Gordon, 80 million for Fafana. It's like, Choose which one you think is the most overpriced. I think it's Gordon, personally. That one, that's the weirdest one of all. But man, I'm 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 excited. Tyler, good question here. Do you think we can challenge for the top of the league now? I didn't read that question before. I said it was a good question. No, we can't. I don't think we're at we're not at that level yet. We're nowhere near that level yet. And even though City are going there and conceding two against Crystal Palace, boom, they score four. And then Liverpool had a crap a couple of games, boom, they beat Bournemouth nine nil. They are just still a level above us, right? They still, they are still a level above us. And this is not the season where we talk about competing for those. For those, this is the season where we just look inwards, build this squad up, build that squad up, build this team up, start winning games back to back, start putting in performances, go out and win the Europa League, get a trophy under your belt, get into the Champions League that way, because maybe the top four is under the top four is going to be tough as hell this year. You've obviously got Liverpool and City up there. Tottenham are looking good under Conte. Arsenal are looking very good under uh, under Arteta. And Chelsea, as much as I want to write Chelsea off, you just you can never write Chelsea off. You can never. I hate that club. Absolutely hate that club. But he's got his man. And I, I look, I've got a big smile on my face. As I said, 
De Jong, that's going to hang out. There's going to be a cloud that hangs over this summer transfer window. But we've got Casemiro. I'm fine with that pivot. If Ericsson can, well, we've got to get Fred and Ericsson rotating and Fred being better at progressing from deep, which will never really particularly happen. Um, so I worry about that. Of course, I worry about that. But, man, I'm excited. Bully, you're down there. You're doing the good things. Cyprus flight's booked. I hope that means your flight's are booked. I need to book a hotel as well. I forgot about that. Go and see Anthony in Cyprus. Or why not? Oh, look, it's my, my club's been shit for years. Years. My God, we've been the whipping boys of the Premier League. The absolute joke, a circus. I'm sure there's going to be more games. Look, the Brighton and the Brentford games, perfect examples. I'm going to be, I'm sure there's going to be more occasions where everyone's going to laugh at Manchester United this year, but no one's laughing at us in this transfer window now. Yes, you can still laugh at the De Jong situation. Yes, you can laugh that we've overpaid, but we have overpaid. Just like everyone else is overpaying. And we're getting what we need for this manager. More is still needed. We need a progressive playmaking central midfielder like Frankie de Jong. We need a big, powerful number nine, or at least somebody who's more suited to that position there than, well, Ronaldo. We know about that. We need a right back there. We need a backup goalkeeper. We probably need a new goalkeeper. This is step one of the squad rebuild, but it's genuinely a good step one. It really, really is a good step one. John, thank you very much for Super Chat, dude. What are you saying, sir? Saying we had our glazers out uh, wrongly confiscated. Uh, John, are you Alex's dad? How you doing, buddy? He's saying we received apology and confirmation that supporters are allowed to continue the protest inside the ground. We have to take full advantage. Thank you very much, dude, for that super chat. And thank you very much for doing what you're doing. Uh, John and Alex, you know they are. Of course you do. Make sure you check out their YouTube channel. But the Glazers Out movement, as it stands, as I said, it feels the strongest it's ever felt. We've got a genuine buyer. And that's, what, that's, that's the big key difference in this whole process now we've got with the Glazers because it's all well and good with the energy against the Glazers. But if you don't have a new owner to point towards, you kind of, it, it, it takes away from the momentum against them. But we've got that new owner. He's already publicly declared his interest in buying the club. It means we can focus our energy in that sense. Rakesh, you're joining as a member. Let me know where you're watching from, dude. Uh, Cheyenne, you're saying, Sam, do you think he'll be involved against Leicester? I can see him being on the bench if his work permit comes in in time. But as we saw with the Martinez deal, we went from 10 days between... Uh, Manchester United announcing a deal with Ajax to Manchester United unveiling Martinez as a player. That's how long the uh, work permit took to come in. Could take a while with Anthony as well. I don't know whether, it, why or how it would be different. We'll find out. Casemiro was quite quick though. That was uh, less than a week, I think it was, from us even being interested in Casemiro to him having his work permit. So it can be done. I don't particularly think he'll start against Leicester though. I think he'll go in and maybe start on the, if he is there, he'll be on the bench. Uh, Eduardo, what are you saying, sir? We want the Glazers out. We want the Glazers out. I don't know why I was saying that. Love, hi, ooh, Hawaii. Look at that. You're saying I'm giving this transfer a solid seven. Flair, rock defense, and a great transition. Look, man. I just want my, as I said, I just want my football club to, I want to feel like my football club is heading in a direction with clarity, with purpose, with a plan. Kind of knowing where we want to be in two years' time rather than going, this isn't working out. Let's try something completely different. Anthony is the latest part of that. Ericsson was part of it. Martinez, Malasia, and now Casemiro. Sure, Casemiro wasn't plan A, but I think any manager in the world will be able to get on with Casemiro and his team. We've got a proper enforcer there. And I'll be honest, I, I don't know who I... If you, if you honestly gave me the choice between Casemiro and De Jong, I'd have to sit and think about it. I would probably choose De Jong because I know how important he would be in the progressive build-up of Ten Hag's game. But as we've seen in these last couple of games, against Liverpool and against Southampton, we've hard, we haven't played out from the back anywhere near as much. Ten Hag's effectively said, right, okay, you're a bit shit at that right now. Let's play slightly different until you actually have the confidence to play like I want you to. So we he can be pragmatic. We have been pragmatic. It's, been, it's allowed these two games and these two wins to happen. As this season progresses, we should get better and better and better at bringing the ball out from the back. But this man's coming in there. As I said, we've got the here we go from uh, Fabrizio Romano. We've got confirmation here of the deal from David Ornstein, from Laurie Whitwell, from The Athletic. Reunited. Eric Ten Hag wanted him and Manchester United have backed him. Just like Liverpool backed Jurgen Klopp with Darwin Nunez on 22, 100 million on a 22-year-old who's had a breakthrough season. He's not exactly a 
a hundred million euro player. It's just the way that this market has gone. Fafana and Gordon and all the other crazy deals. Anthony is the latest of one of those. Chioba, let me know where you're watching from, dude. But look, I'm going to wrap this one up for now. And I can't wait to get this week started. This is a major, major week coming up. I'm going to be here live at 9.30 in the morning. I'm going to have an Anthony scouting report going out at lunchtime tomorrow. And a Casemiro scout report going out a little bit later in the week. So you definitely want to subscribe to United People TV if you are new. Sue, there you go, saying, look, Sam, have a beer on me. Thank you very much. Uh, content on point this window. Well, United, I'll be honest, as I said, I always felt that we would be happy towards the end of the window. Three days left. It's not pure happiness. There's still frustrations. Definite frustrations. But I'll tell you what, Eric Ten Hag has got a much better team than we had last year. Comparing that there with Matomane and Fred in midfield with Bruno and a back four of Lindelof, Maguire, Shaw and Delow, all of a sudden to a back four of Martinez, Varane and Malasia with a midfield three of Casemiro, Bruno and Eriksen. That's an upgrade. Ten Hag's getting backed. Anthony's the latest addition. I can't wait to see what he does next. Thank you very much for joining in here on a Sunday evening. I got a curry, which is now cold because it arrived when I was on stream here. So I'm going to go and enjoy that. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And make sure you subscribe to United People's TV and catch me in the morning because it's going to be a cracking show at half nine. Take it easy, everyone. Okay.